What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm praying. I can see that. Why? I'm hoping that Packet is okay. Who is Connor Ingram anyway? Everybody's hands go up, way up, as the Nashville Predators defeat the Ottawa Senators Tuesday night by a score of 3-2. to two. On a night when most of the teams immediately around them in the standings, except for one, and we'll get to all of that in the game summary, forced the Preds to keep pace, they answered the challenge. If there was ever going to be a guaranteed win night for this team down the stretch, driving into the playoffs potentially, it was tonight against the third worst team in the NHL. If you hadn't heard, Pekka Rene is out for this game with an illness. So Connor Ingram was recalled from the Milwaukee Admirals until Pekka can return. UC Soros would get the start in this game for the Preds, as the Preds would get a power play chance only 51 seconds into the first period as Shabbat high sticks Craig Smith. Preds have good puck movement, but ultimately do what they have done too many times this season and don't score a power play goal. Fortunately tonight, it would be the only time the Preds didn't score with a man advantage. It would be the Sens who would get the first lead of the game, though, as Shabbat redeems himself for the penalty, and he beats Soros high stick side for the 1-0 lead. This Sens team is far from a playoff spot, but they appear hungry in every highlight package I have seen of them this season. Preds bounce back, though, as 20 seconds later, Ryan Johansson toe-drags it towards the net, Gets it to Matthias Ekholm, who shoots it at Craig Anderson. And the rebound comes out right to Cohen Blackwell, who bangs it home for a 1-1 tie. Just over a minute to go in the first, though. Ottawa off the rush, and Balser takes a shot at Soros. And the rebound, which is a big one that Soros shouldn't be giving up, comes right out to Chipik, who buries it, making it 2-1 cents. Despite the win... Ultimately in this game, that is not a goal Soros is going to want to be giving up consistently. The Preds did not put forth their best effort in that first period to start the game as the Sens would outshoot the Preds 17-9. In the second period, the Preds are finally showing more effort and finally get rewarded on it with a power play. And it's Chris Turney for slashing Colton Sissons. And in the final seconds of that power play, Mikhail Grinlin off of the faceoff gets it back to Ryan Ellis who skates out and in his third game back from injury shoots it at Anderson, scores, getting his seventh of the season to tie the game at two. Oh how we've missed you Ryan. Just over four minutes later, Ryan Ellis quarterback in the power play gets it over to Cali Yarncroak who one times it at the net and Victor Arvidsson is there in front of Craig Anderson puck in his feet and gets control of it and bangs it home to give the Preds a 3-2 lead. Arvidsson is pumped up again. His teammates are pumped up again. Bridgestone Arena is pumped up. The Preds pull their best George Costanza and play the exact opposite in the second period that they played the first, now out shooting the Sens in that period, 17 to nine back at them. The Preds would lock her down in the third period with UC Sarles stopping all nine Senator shots, including a great chance by Brady Kachuk right in front of them with a minute 50 to go, but the juice says no. The Preds kill the rest of the clock successfully, winning the game 3-2. It wasn't easy, but the Preds are showing us a pattern right now that is contrary to what they showed us earlier in the season. When they face adversity in a game, they don't back down anymore. They keep fighting. And my goodness, the special teams tonight. If only they could be this consistent more often, they wouldn't be so stressful to watch. The power play went two for three tonight and a penalty kill killed both of the Senators' chances. And give the Ottawa Senators credit for their effort tonight. They may be the third worst team in the standings, but by watching them, they certainly don't appear to be so. With a couple moves in the not too distant 
future with the young pieces they already have, that is going to be a good team to watch in a few years. As for the Preds, they are 5-1-1 one one in their last seven, playing right into the pattern they need to be in right now of winning two out of every three games or so. On the out-of-town scoreboard, every team immediately around them in the standings either won or at least got a point except for the Arizona Coyotes. What does all of this mean after Tuesday's night of action? For the first time since November 13th, 2019, that's 104 days, the Nashville Predators finished the business day in a playoff spot. Next up for the Preds, Brady Kachuk's brother, Matthew, and his Calgary Flames are in Nashville on Thursday, and his Flames are right in the thick of the playoff race along with Nashville. Preds, time to avenge that Halloween night collapse to this Flames squad. 20 games left in the regular season, boys. Let's keep it rolling. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media links by clicking the channel name. Tell all of your friends, Preds Nation, the Preds are in a playoff spot.